the proof of work has always been somewhat wasteful when you talk about the electricity that is expended to you know to generate the proof of work. Um, from a sustainability perspective, I don't like that, and so I've always been in favor of proof of stake and other forms of you know basically building consensus on the blockchain that don't need as much computing power. But if you start to switch from proof of work to some other build, you know, other consensus building, well, then you may ask, what will we do with all of that processing power? And what can we do? Well, I think that some of the AI applications look really exciting. So using those GPU and CPU cycles for AI and other things, uh, what we do is storage related. So that doesn't directly benefit from processing power but we can definitely make use of all the excess storage on the on the internet and then allow people to access that storage through AI. So we have a solution that is kind of compatible with that new proof of stake and I think that's what we have to do with all of those cycles. Do you own mining equipment? Uh, personally, no, I don't. Um, at the very beginning, I did experiment with mining on my own computer, but of course, you know, mining computers quickly grew to be very advanced technology and so I've never bothered to buy like a big mining rig or other things. No. Uh, there are top three technologies in the world and uh, one of them is blockchain of yeah. course and uh, what are other two? What are the other two? Okay, so I would say the other two that I'm most passionate about and interested about are automation technologies. So this would include everything from say driverless vehicles that are able to drive autonomously, uh, drones and other technologies that are going to help us with transportation uh, solutions. So that's the first technology that I think is really amazing. And the second of course has to be AI. Right? So the idea of in the future, how will AI be able to help us rather than replace us? You know, I don't like the idea of AI is going to replace all of us and we don't have any more job to do. Instead, I like to think about AI can actually help to uh, add to our abilities. So we will somehow merge together with AI, right? We'll be assisted by AI. And that way we can kind of coexist. We don't have to fear AI, but it's, uh, it's going to have a lot of benefits if we can figure out how to do that. I think we can cooperate with AI. Exactly, in some yeah. Way, I don't Let's know. cooperate with our future robotic overlords, you know? <laughs> A lot of projects doesn't have any MVP. Uh, what? Uh, how can an investor uh, minimize his risks? Yeah. So, I think when you go and look at say different projects, you want to look at first of all actually the team that's yes. behind the project. You have to understand, you know, does this team have the ability to deliver on what they're promising? Um, the MVP, in some ways, is not as critical, I think, as the team itself. If you have a good team, they'll be able to produce the MVP. You know, it can be fast or it could be a little bit slower, but a good team will be able to do that. They have good cooperation, good communication. What I like to look for is the team is in one place. Um, I don't think decentralized teams work as well when you're talking about an MVP. You really have to have really good communication, everybody working closely together. So, so look at the makeup of the team, look at how they're working and how they're going to deliver the project. Those are the two things that I look at you know, when I'm evaluating you know, whether this project is good or not, even if they don't have an MVP. I'm not always worried if a project doesn't have an MVP, uh, but I am worried if they don't have a good team. Yeah. Mm. And have you ever buy tokens already? Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, successful? Yeah, so, so I've been doing a lot of things with tokens. You know, I wanted to first of all understand Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some of the other main cryptocurrencies. Uh, later I started looking at some of the uh, ICO projects and seeing which ones I like to support on the basis of their idea. Um, I was never really looking at tokens as an investment. I was looking at the projects and saying, okay, which project deserves some funding? You know, I, lo I love crowdfunding. I love the idea of kind of Kickstarter. I've supported my friends' projects in the past. So I think that the ICO model is, is great if you can treat it in that way of saying, I want to support this project because I think it's a good project. So I have bought some tokens in the past. Um, for the most part, I've kept those tokens still until today. I don't see any reason to, you know, to divest. So I'm just kind of treating it as an experiment. I want to support this ecosystem. And so I don't think that speculation and you know, trading for investment really helps the ecosystem to develop. It is, it is one point that you do need some investment and you do need some speculation. But my role is, I believe, as an ecosystem supporter. So I'm keeping my tokens for the long term.
Yeah. Have you ever heard about the Aeromotion uh, company? Um, so, in fact, I heard about them for the first time today, uh -huh. but I, I love their value proposition. Um, so, I mentioned AI a few minutes ago about one of the main technologies I think is going to power the future. You know, this kind of solution does have that capability, and I did like how they have the idea of supporting data and training AI using big data sets. That's what our Gennaro network is doing for providing big data sets. So we hope that maybe we can cooperate with a company like Neuromation to say, well, you provide the AI and you provide the API, we can provide the data storage, and then we work together to build a bigger AI storage ecosystem. So I love their idea. I'm going to learn more about it.